Look, if you had one shot or one opportunity to support every Patreon you ever wanted in one moment, would you pledge it or just let it slip? Yo. His palms are sweaty, knees weak, original content heavy. There's content on his sweater already, mom's spaghetti. We're nervous, but on the surface we look calm and ready. You better lose yourself in the content, the dungeons, you own it. You better never let it go. You only get one shot, do not miss your chance to pledge. This opportunity comes once in a pay period. Patreon.com slash Goblin Scrowlers. So we're going to go ahead and open in on Sil- on 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 Silenar on Solenar. <laughs> we're going to go ahead and open on Solenar being absorbed by treasure. I like Silenar is where uh you work in a large corporation but nobody really knows who you are. You never reach across the <laughs> Yeah, inter- interdepartmental uh yeah. cooperation is non-existent. No, Silenar does not, you yeah. know, he he runs into an IT issue and he's like, I don't know, it must be the computer broken until <laughs> Somebody fix this. I'm not doing anything. <laughs> Sorry, Silenar. You can get back to uh, shoveling gold into the coal f- the the gold uh, kiln. <laughs> this is Quid Pro Roll, a fantasy live play adventure where a party of unlikely heroes embark on a quest to bring dragons back to their world. Well, howdy, listeners. Welcome to the Daily Crier Listening Show, where all the news and varying and beyond can make its way, well, right to you. The party delves ever deeper into the dark and dreamlike Silver Temple. The puzzles and traps they must endure seem bountiful and unlikely to cease. Most recently, they encountered two nearly identical rooms and had to arrange elements therein to complete the mirrored effect before they could progress on. Now, don't you get comfortable with the cozy puzzles, as danger still lurks around every corner. And soon as the party finds a hallway of doors and mirrors, Solinar opens one to a room of treasure and gold. Though he discovers only too late, the treasure he is sifting through is shifting and gripping onto him. What a reflection. Well, listeners, time has come again to bid you all a fine week. And as always, y'all take care now. So you say Solinar is being absorbed by the pile of treasure. Uh, how is how does that go in the instant it happens? So I want you to imagine this hoard of treasure like an amoeba, and it is reaching out its gold-plated pseudopods in the piles of coins that it is, and begins wrapping around you and dragging you into itself. Okay, so there's there's a moment where the treasure pile starts moving and Solinar is like, oh, I must have shifted something. Uh, you know, that's normal. Like, you're shifting a pile of treasure around. It sort of starts to settle down. And then he realizes that it's actually, like, grabbing him and trying to grab more of him. And as that's happening, he's like, wait, help, help. The treasure's alive. I'm going to get eaten. Oh. Classic treasure situation right there. Look, he's so excited he's saying he's going to get eaten. (laughs) He's like jumping deeper into the... uh, Solar, you can find stuff on the surface, man. You don't have to swim in. I don't want to be treasure drowned. Treasure drowned? What do you mean? This guy is so silly. His voice, like the the money starts going into his mouth and he starts sounding like that bit from the Matrix when like the mirror starts going into Neo's throat. Just like, Wah. I'm gonna get eaten. Cause... Is one of you going to try and save him? <laughs> oh, I don't know. He's in trouble yet. I'm gonna roll for it. Just find out. Roll in insight trouble. into the situation. Oh, it's on. I'm coming, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I start sprinting uh, and I try to grab his legs. You will succeed in grabbing his legs. I need you to uh, pull, do a strength check. 
How about a good old fashioned 18? So with a grunt, you're going to begin to start Blah. freeing Solinar from this pile of gold. Enough so that his head and upper body is going to be coming out free, though his arms are still clutched in the mass. Solinar, you gotta let go of the gold, buddy. I'm not I'm not trying to hold the gold. The gold's trying to hold me. Oh no, you're in the gold hole. Gold's a really soft metal. You should be able to escape. Wriggle wriggle your way out of it. It can't get a good hold on you. <laughs> Attack its emotions. It's very soft. <laughs> Cause it's gonna reach out his staff and poke at the, the gold creature to try to distract it. What do I what do you roll for I'm not touching you distraction? Roll bully. Yeah. It's it's some sort of intimidation. Is it is it a strength roll for overpowering the grasp or a dexterity roll for slip in the grip? I will allow whatever is higher for you. A slip oh, of the grip. So a 15. That will be enough to get you free from the gold. Solonar is just like, he's just like wiggling and like squirming, trying not to like rattle Johannes's grip on him but also trying to, like, get his arms free of the treasure creature. And he finally, like, gets one arm free and immediately, like, he pulls on his other arm to get it free. And then he and Johannes both go stumbling backwards a few steps. With the pop. That sounds surprising. We'll get, cork going. get uncorked. No, it doesn't. <laughs> As you free Solinar, the gold seems to shudder. This odd tremor goes up the entirety of it. It then begins to recoil into itself, and it seems to escape somehow through some form of opening in maybe the floor or the sides of the walls. It isn't terribly clear where, but it slips away and reduces as if it has gone somewhere else almost wriggling. So like, as like a, a jellied mass, it yes. just sort of disappeared? Yes, like it, like it was being absorbed by the floor. Okay. I almost. mean, do we get a sense that like it was moving through small cracks and stuff like that? I mean, as small a cracks as coins can fit through. Okay. Like Left like, behind, however, are going to be a small pile of stone. Semi-precious to precious. I'm not going to touch the stones. Solinar, go get those stones. <laughs> Solinar, having just had a harrowing treasure-grabbing experience, pulls out the Sword of Shireen and pokes the stones. As you poke the pile of stones, the pile itself, you know, disassembles and the stones clatter to the floor. But they appear to just be loose stones, like you can separate them from the pile. Yes. Okay. After separating them all from the pile, Solinar will start picking them up. All right. You are going to get four amethyst, three malachite, two rubies, an emerald, and a diamond. Is there anything else of note in this room? Do you want to do some investigation? Yeah, I can do that. Is there an orange juice stand? There unfortunately is not one. God, I hate this room. A Johannes walked up to a lemonade stand and he has the man running the stand. When life gives you oranges, you're in a good spot. Tasty, zesty. Vitamin C. Vitamin C, baby. Yeah, I wish that Orange Julius had gotten back to us about a sponsorship so that there could have been one in this room. Uh, but you, you know how it goes. Can you imagine how wild that would be if when sponsors ask to sponsor the show, what they really do is they give an item that I have to populate in the most beneficial place for you guys, their product, and it has to be usable in the dungeon somehow. I Just product placement. I want that variety of sponsorship on a TTRPG show because it sounds hilarious and also like something that would be effective marketing. It reminds me of um, the uh, game, um, like, I think it was called like video game creator or video game manager or something where you like, you take over a video game company. If you don't buy it legally, they had something in it where 
it would like people would steal your game and it will you would lose tons of profit because people were pirating your game mm -hmm. which is awesome clever. and so people on the forums would be like hey this game this game is like broken like it's too hard like people keep stealing my game and they'd be like <laughs> oh do they do they do that <laughs> because it was literally just like that was what the licensing check it would allow you to steal it like they leaked it themselves but it would cause that to happen um that's yeah, really, really wild. fun. But one other thing they did was like, as you're scaling up, there's uh, some company asks to put their, their like, they manufacture red explosive barrels. They're like, well, hey, we make red explosive barrels. Could you like do a product <laughs> placement in your game? And if you put it in a game that's not an action game, they're like, hey, we really appreciated it. Um, I don't think that it worked out super well. Um, but uh, we, you know, you got to experiment with things. But then if you put it in an action game, they're like, dude, you guys are the absolute best. Oh, man, our red barrel sales are through the roof. I love the idea that you put it in a game that's like Stardew Valley or The Sims. It's like, I think my is first, a very calm game. My first one I did, I think I put it in a, a, TT, or a um, uh, RPG uh, tabletop game. Yeah, because uh, like there's you have all the themes of the game and then the type of game. And I did like an RPG high fantasy and I put a red barrel, explosive red barrel in it. I mean, I yeah. think that works out reasonably well. Uh, yeah, lots of, throw it lots at the of, dragon. Lots of D&D &D people out here with their smoke powder barrels making things happen. A lot of fireballs, man. Brandon, you were rolling investigation. What did you get, bud? Uh, oh. it, did, it didn't work out. No, no wait, what wait. did you roll? <laughs> yeah, to, to see if you found a red explosive barrel. There might be one in the corner. Yeah, oh, I do notice the ape throwing barrels at us. <laughs> up at, well, up at the is. top. Uh, no, I rolled a six and modified that was an eight. So you are going to notice within the collective room, there is something odd about the fact that there's nothing here. Mm hmm. What do you mean by nothing here? So the room itself doesn't have any furniture. It doesn't have any paintings or tapestries on the walls. The only thing that was notable when you first walked in was this enormous pile of treasure, which has now escaped. Mm hmm. But if that was something that was a monster or something that was not planned to be here, like sometimes, you know, there had been monsters and stuff that had made it into the temples, there should be, like, a sign that this room was used. Right. So it just seems like almost just like a storage room. Yeah. Otherwise. Okay. All right. This room's creeping me out. Um, I don't know. It just it seems oddly placed. There's not a whole lot going on in here. I'm just I'm going to back out slowly after that whole coin blob mess. Yeah, I'm with you both. There's no no oranges in here. Not even an orange vendor. I really expected some orange juice to be happening. But, you know, not happening. <laughs> Start following boat out. Well, thank you for getting me out of the deadly pile of ooze treasure or whatever that was. I don't... That's the first I've ever seen something like that, and I was horrified. Oh, no problem, Solonar. As soon as I realized that you were saying, help help because I'm gonna be rich and I need help spending all this money <laughs> and I realized you're saying help help I can't breathe because gold is filling every uh, orifice uh, you know I, I came quickly to pull you out Koza as everybody is having this conversation you hear three things at separate points one is you hear the soft jingling of coins from what appears to be within the walls Two, you hear a soft, sort of distant scream that sounds familiar. And three, you hear the sound of running water somewhere nearby. Uh, I think I just heard a scream. Did, did anybody else hear that? Nope. Can, can I get a bearing on where the scream came from? Yes. So from where you stand, it looks like it's going to be one of the rooms that is on the other side of the hallway from you, closer to the large door that's at the back of the hall. I, I think we need to go look over here. Uh, okay, okay, come on. Well, at, at least this life and death encounter didn't leave us with nothing. Solonar, like, rattles. He's got a little, a little sachet now full of uh, the gemstones, and he rattles it puts it in his pack 
All right, you said you heard a scream I, from I, over there? I think I heard a scream. Well, there shouldn't be anybody left down here. It's been hundreds of years. But... But well, he, he follows along all the same. Okay. I mean, I, I don't know what it was, but... I, it sounded familiar. I guess, I guess I'm just a little... I'm a little nervous that it's like, um... You remember that, uh, that last place that we were in? There was all of the, was all the ghosts in the hallways. And then that one ghost started taking over people's bodies. There was a lot of shrieking in that place. So that's kind of, that's, that's a little bit what I'm nervous about. What was the, what was the copper temple, I think? Oh, oh my gosh, wait, no, that... That, that, that was a temple guardian sound. Um, l- let's go the other way. Um, the, the, the other way, other way. Let, let's turn around. Let's, let's not go this way. Um. Well, well, wait, wait. We were going to have Alita in her priest robes try to talk Draconic at them to see if maybe we can actually navigate these spaces safely, right? Because th- those are big double doors. That's probably the way we're going, right? I mean, maybe there's a secret path. The, don't you hear the sound of water running over over this? Which Where's the water coming from? It looks like it's coming from the door at the end of the hallway. That's different, right, from the tree door, right? Yes. Okay. It is actually the room next to from where you heard the shriek. Okay, because it's going to... Um, l- let's, let's open this door first. Over my own heartbeat, I'm not hearing much of anything. So you walk to the end of the hall, and the door in front of you, as I said before, is elaborate. As you reach for the doorknob, you can feel that the doorknob is wet to the touch and is locked. Uh, it's locked. You want me to pick it? Pick it. Solonar breaks out his picks, and then he notices how wet... I, I presume it's the lock as well that is very wet, not just the handle of Everything the door. in this is is wet. What? That... Why? What? No. Why is everything wet? This is terrible. Actually, how is this lock like this if everything is wet? The, surely it would have rusted ages ago. Maybe it's a very arid environment. It, uh, no, I mean, there's. it's all covered in water. We're not talking about, like, it's wet behind but dry over here. We're talking about this whole lock is very wet. The door itself also appears to be wet, though the wood has not warped. Uh, I, I'm thinking this is some kind of trap, but it, uh, if it is, I'm guessing it's magical in nature, kind of like that ice thing that we dealt with earlier. Maybe throw something at it before you start messing with it. Like, anybody have a big rock we can just throw from a distance and see if anything happens? Oh, I've got a lime. Throw I throw a lime. Oh, cheese! So, Johannes is gonna, you know, kick back and, like, you know, yeet the lime, which is going to hit the door and then just fall to the ground. Heck yeah, take that door. Well, it's, yeah. it's not impact sensitive. Interestingly... Kosa, you're going to notice, because of your passive perception, Mm -hmm. that when the lime hit the door, it didn't make any impact sound. Oh, take it back, Gabe. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Kosa's going to reach out and touch the door. The door is wooden and wet to the touch. He's going to knock on the door. Your fist collides with the door, but it makes no sound. But you do pull your hand away with water on your palm and knuckles. Does it sound like it's muffled or just straight up like no sound? It sounds muffled. Okay, so it's not like a hollow sound on the other end. Other stuff. No, yeah, it, it, it's, it, it sounds much more muted and quiet. Almost as if it was suppressed somehow. As if maybe it's full of water on the other side? There's water on the other side for sure. Uh, I think maybe the other side is flooded? Ooh. Hmm. I, I don't know that we do want me unlocking this door then. I mean, but maybe there's another path. 
maybe we just let the water drain out. But there's you think some somebody might have left their sink on? We really need to turn that off. That's a big bill waiting to happen. Should we check out the other three doors before we go trying to hope that the water spreads out enough that we don't just drown down here? Uh, yeah, is the is the lock on the water door just a standard lock? It appears to be just a standard lock. Okay, because if the room was full of water, water would be like, if the room were big enough, the pressure from the water would be shooting water out of that lock, like, um, like a high pressure hose. Yeah, unless the lock is also magic in some way, and keeps a seal on the door, because it the lock is wet and the door is wet, and. Everything around the door is wet. Well, water is not shooting through the door. Hear me out, There would have to be space under the door for the door to be able to move. Hear me out, though. If I were making a water trap room like this, I wouldn't want anybody to have any kind of hint that the room was full of water. I would want people to just open the door and get drowned. So I wonder... If it's an accident and it's not supposed to be full of water, and maybe that means there's something important in there. I mean, you could be right. I'm just saying maybe we should check out two of our three other rooms first. Because as Koza says, there might be a secret passageway that leads us around this. All right. Well, I'll get ready to cast Knock just in case. So what is the what is the play? What is the call? Uh, Solinar is going to check one of the other two rooms. There's the one that had the guardian shriek behind it. Which I'm assuming you're avoiding. Uh, I, I mean, unless the party says otherwise, yes. Please avoid. So the room immediately to the left of the damp, wet door also appears to be locked. But the door is dry and tapping around it gives the same kind of sound you'd expect. Solonar is going to investigate it real quick for traps. I've had significantly better trap checking rolls. Uh, it's an 11. It appears fine to you. He's just kind of like poking around. He takes out one of his daggers and runs the frame of the, like the outside frame of the door. And he's like, no, it seems fine. And then, uh, he takes out his lock picks and goes to pick the lock. You fumble with the lock, and as you, you're you still unable to get it open, but despite the fact that you're unable to get it open, you hear a soft, sharp noise on the inside of the lock. A just bleed of corrosive acid is going to come out of the front of this lock, hitting you in the hands and causing nine acid damage. And ruining my lockpicks. And ruining the lockpicks. You're lucky they didn't destroy your gloves. I am very lucky they didn't destroy my gloves. And I'm taking myself down to one set of thieves' duels. Solonar just, like, yanks his hands back and he's like, no, 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 oh, come on. Really? Uh, and again, acid- you do take nine corrosive acid damage. The, as he, like, draws his hands back really sharply, the acid splashes on, like, his chest and a little bit on his neck. And he's like, oh, ow, ow, God, why? Who puts, who puts acid in a lock? Come on. Well, it's probably unlocked now. So there's that, at least. I bet you were hoping it was more of a basic lock. <laughs> I don't know why that got me so bad. I'm sorry. That's my contribution for the episode. (laughs) Solonar just looking very like sour and irritable. So what do you guys want to do? It sounds like the door is unlocked now, right? You don't know. Uh, Solonar, I want you to see if that's unlocked now. (laughs) Solonar's like trying to brush away like little flecks of the acid off his clothes. And he's like, give me a minute. Jeez. Because it's going to reach out and try the knob. But like so from the side. carefully and gingerly avoiding the parts of the lock and knob that were, you know, 
touched by corrosive acid. Yeah. You try to turn the knob and you find that it's stuck. Whatever the acid did to the inside of the lock has fused the lock into the door. Uh, I think this door is stuck now. Oh, really? That you have an acid lock that sticks if it like think about this from a logical perspective. If you are someone who resides inside this building and you want something important behind that door to be secure, then you want to make sure nobody lock picks it, right? Well, if a normal person came around and picked that lock, then they've just burned both their hands off. But I'm not a normal person. I have heightened reflexes, so I don't get my hands burnt off. I now cannot get into that room until someone dismantles the entire door. Is that I'm, really, is that the most efficient use of this space? I'm not like other half elves. <laughs> I, have re- I have reflexes. Mm-hmm. Alita, well, after taking a minute to like put on the priest robes and is now fully donned out, looks over at Boat. We could just kick the door in. Yeah, we could just beat the crap out of that lock. While you were studying the lock pick and heightened reflexes, I was studying the boot. <laughs> Yeah. Because it casts mend on the on the lock, the doorknob. You're going to see mushrooms bloom out from the inside of the lock before they kind of disappear in a poof of spores. Behind them, revealing a pristine new lock. Because it's gonna try to turn the knob. The door is still locked. Uh, um uh, uh Solnar, try it again. Oh, I see what you're doing. Okay, yep, I'll I'll try it again. Solonar's like, so help me if there's still acid in here. Uh, A 23? A 23 is going to do it. So you do hear the same soft cracking sound, but whatever the glass inside the lock was, the acid has been expelled. So that was not repaired with mending. The door opens, like you can feel the lock give, and the door will have the ability to open. Can you imagine if mending replaced all of the ingredients inside traps? Like, you mend a poison (laughs) dart arrow trap and it fills with poison dart arrows again? That'd be sick. It's like the mushrooms just become... I mean, the mushrooms would be able to find the poison. Mushrooms are the most (laughs) adaptable thing. They could do... I feel like they could do that. Like mushrooms... an atom bomb drops and then you go to the site and you do mending and you just build a new atom bomb. (laughs) (laughs) The mushrooms find the the poison and then become the poison. Yeah. The door is unlocked now. Solonar uh, goes ahead and opens the door. As the door opens, you find a room that is dimly lit, almost in a reverent way. At the end, the room itself is fairly simple, with a carpet leading to a large-ish kind of glass case. Inside the glass case is a set of scale mail that seems to emit a soft light. Hmm. Uh, that's interesting. I love scale mail. See, I'm wearing some right now, I think. Am I? Let's find out. <laughs> I thought you were wearing half or full plate. Oh, yeah, I've got a breastplate. Probably over some scale. My point being... It looks nice. It looks soft and warm and bright. Those are things I like. Also things other people like. Anybody like this like me? <laughs> I'm not I'm not big on shiny armor. Oh yeah, that's right. Hard to hard to be sneaky if you're all lit up. Well, and also any light source makes me all glittery, which don't get me wrong, it's pretty, but it does make yeah. you know hiding in shadows really challenging. Every time you step out in the sun, I'm always blown away by how glittery you are. How glittery I am? Mm-hmm. Just okay. glittering away. Oh, thank you. I don't yeah. I don't know what that's about, but I'll I'll take it. Yeah, that's like my skincare routine is always like how much more like an elf can I look? Oh, All I right, so are we gonna are we gonna take the scale mail or not? Oh I don't well, know. We're talking about hydrating our skin, but <laughs> Well, first of all, let me look around the scale mail because, you know, acid vials inside locks aren't the only kinds of traps. Solonar, like, takes a nice long time and checks all around the display case 
Uh, I got an 18 for investigation. So he's like probing around. He's checking crevices. He's looking at corners. He's looking for like trip wires and things. Well, you do find a door in the glass to open and access the scale mail, you can see that it does have a simple trap on it. Is it like a latch trap? Like you pull on it and the trap triggers because you pulled too hard sort of deal? Yes. So he, he pulls just enough to get enough space in there where he can put his thieves tools in and try to disarm the trap without activating it. You're going to be able to disarm the trap, and the door is going to slowly and gently swing open. That feels that feels a little better after my luck experience recently. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think we're good. Solinar reaches into the case to take the scale mail out. As your hands touch it, well, your gloves touch it, you can feel through the armor that it's kind of cool to the touch almost refreshing like a cold towel on the back of your neck during a really hot day oh that's that's really nice actually that this feels great everybody come touch this scale mail this is wonderful okay i'll oh. try <laughs> yeah i touch it yeah. you all feel the same sensation though a little bit oh. stronger given that soliners wearing gloves oh, this, this is so pleasant the light that was emitting from the scale mail sort of softly and gently recedes. It still is luminous. It's still beautiful, but it's no longer actively a light. Alita, what do you what do you think this is about? Hmm. This looks to be made of silver dragon scales. This oh. was probably made for some of the paladins that worked in the temple. Everybody. Oh, what well, already turns. <laughs> I know a paladin working in this temple. Ooh, man, temple paladins this is one of the most stable lines of paladin work you can get. <laughs> I that was the first thing I applied for. I was like, dude, I want to be a temple paladin. Just hanging out in the temple of Soon all the time. You can really take care of your skin and uh, have a nice, pretty like hair all the time. And oh my god, you see those Temple of Zoom Paladins, and you're like, they are, oh man, good looking. I'm, and I was like, I want to be that. I'm just imagining a Temple of Soon with the way that things are with her tenants. It's basically just like a day spa, mm -hmm. but like, holy. Yeah, it's exactly what it is, Alina. And the thing about that is, is it would have been so good, but turns out, gotta have a minimum GPA requirement. Man, did I miss that by a lot. <laughs> Solinar, <laughs> Solinar spends a moment thinking about, like, the back rooms that sometimes things occur in in a Temple of Soon, and he's like, no, it's probably for the best that you didn't become a Temple of Soon paladin. There's, um, there's some stuff probably wouldn't be ideal for you. Plus, you wouldn't have ever been able to adventure and see the countryside, which I think is, you know, a big positive. Oh, now I would never want to be a Temple paladin because... I've learned so much and you can help so many people if you're just kind of like, you know, walking around. Um, and also because then I wouldn't have met you guys, which is like the best thing that ever happened to me. Oh, thanks. Well, I think I think this should definitely go to Johannes. I can't think of anybody it's better suited for in our whole group. I don't know that any of the rest of you can equip scale mail. <laughs> oh, well, I've got... I put it on. I've got a 10 in strength. I'm sure that's enough, right? You're going to put it on? Yeah, why not? You know, I take off, I like unbuckle my breastplate and I'm like, well, okay, yeah, tie the hair up, making sure that I can pull things out without it getting caught. This is the hardest part, honestly. So you don the scale mail armor and it glows a little bit more, shrinking and adjusting to fit to your proportions and size. There is nothing else in this room, having served its purpose of bestowing silver dragon mail on a paladin. You can feel this sense of satisfaction. Look, I don't want to, like, I don't want to sit here and make too big a deal out of it right now, but oh my god, do I look good. Look at this. Wow. Your it look, is perfect, perfectly fitted. I thought you looked shiny before, but like, you are, like... You're practically sparkling now. It's amazing. Yeah. Powerful disadvantage on stealth right now, though. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Man, I mean, look at this. I've got all this, uh, these scales. They, I mean, they look almost like fish scales. Like if I move around, look at how glittery they are. Oh, <laughs> this is awesome. Oh, I bet if we beamed light directly at you and you turned, like all the little bits of light that hit the scales would shine out into spots on the walls. Oh my god, I'd be my own disco ball because that's the style of music that was popular in Alaria like 40 years ago. Yeah, exactly. People just called it disco. You'd throw discs in the air and then you'd hit them and they make different sounds while they move. So Disco. <laughs> So as you all are have as you are having this conversation stepping back into the hallway, three doors remain. The damp door, the door with the mysterious screams behind it, and the final one that you have yet to investigate. is a co-production of Alpha Comics and Games with Goblins and Growlers. Our audio production and all original music composition is provided by Gabriel Perez. He can be found at Amethyst Audiomancer on Instagram. The voice of Alita and our DM for the podcast is Alex Smith. She can be found at Alpha Comic Games on Twitter. The voice of Charles Gravyboat Barnes is Brandon Dingus. He can be found at Way of Brandalore on Twitter. The voice of Eek and Koza are Chapman Adams. He can be found at What Are Birds on Instagram. The voice of Johannes is Alon. He can be found at The Dungeon Meowster on Instagram. And finally, the voice of Solinar is me, Josh Maltby, and I can be found at Black Cloak DM on Twitter. Thanks so much for listening. Uh, the most notable weird thing about this, and this is just for a note, uh, if you focus your senses... Uh, and take an action, you can find the closest silver dragon within 30 miles of you. <laughs> I'm going to do that right away. That's that's Johannes's nightly ritual is to see if he can find any silver dragons. Hello, this is me. <laughs> one of these, Hello, one of these silver nights, dragons. One of these nights Hello. I'll find a silver dragon. Unfortunately, and- there doesn't seem to be a silver dragon anywhere near shocking truly wouldn't it be amazing if like that's how y'all found out that it was a hoax all along and all the silver dragons live like in one town <laughs> they weren't actually <laughs> sealed away the this has all is, been one big g- big goof we'd have to get within 30 miles of that town they're all at a sunian day spot no what'd be wild to me is if every night that johannes does this he detects one silver dragon nearby and he's like, that's weird. And he goes looking for it. And all he finds is Snuffles. And he's like, well, <laughs> Snuffles isn't a dragon. This thing's broken. And then he goes back to doing what he was doing. Bro- broken scale mail. <laughs> so yeah, I've got a it's, wait. I've got an advantage on saving throw against Frightful Presence. And I'm brave because I'm a halfling. So we've got advantage on fear. Double advantage. Yeah. The big one that I think is going to be fun is the uh, advantage on saving throws against breath weapons. No, that probably won't come up. Probably not. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs>